Aloha. It's early here, and yet, um, I know most of you have already uh, lived through half your day. That's okay. Um, you know, I just keep getting stirred about just all the negativity and all the division and hate and judgment and, oh, that's my, that's Kai Kani. Um, and I, I can't help but think about uh, the truth and, the, I mean, the truth that is universal and, and then the lies that we have chosen to believe to justify whatever actions or feelings we have. Um, and I say we because we've all, at some point, have um, deal with this, you know. And so, I guess I think the first thing is um, love, you know. To me, the best name of God is love. And um, that's it. Pure, unconditional love. And anytime we're able to give love, and even if it's fairly conditional, it's still a taste of love. But I think few of us have really just been able to dive in and be totally immersed in the unconditional love that is God, universe, Christ, whatever name you would like to put on it. And by the way, the only reason we put a name on it is because we have to have a category to put it in and then uh, control, which is the human instinct, and um, then try to shove it down other people's throats saying this is the only way. And by the way, if you think you understand love, God, universe, Christ, whatever moniker, then your God's too small. Besides, God is never meant to be understood. God is to be known and experienced in the same way with humans. To know somebody. And so I'm reminded of when someone asked God, what is, what, uh, asked Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, Christ, what, what's the greatest commandments? And he said, well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, which covers everything. And then he said, and just as important is love your neighbor as yourself. Where that little piece is hard because most, most people truly don't love themselves because they don't know themselves because they're afraid to connect with them because, ooh, all the bad stuff. <laughs> Yet love covers, it says, a multitude of sin. And then we have the debate of what sin is, right? Sin is very simple. Sin is ego. And what several people have said, but Michael Mordad's one of them, it's edging God out. It's when we've decided that our ego and who we are and our self-protection and all our self is more important than the, the good of the bigger story, which is all of us, which are one hmm, in Christ. Unity. And we, the more we separate the more further away from us experience the God and other people, you know, and us being Christ to other people. And again, please don't get hung up on the word Christ because I don't mean it in a religious way or a, um, a strict doctrinal way because that's not it. You don't have... Uh, We don't have ownership of God. <laughs> Nobody does. Every religion has an essence of God in it. 
it's just that when we start serving ourselves and our self-protection is we start making God in our image instead of allowing God to transform us into him, into his image, that the issues arise. And you know what? Even the people who are calling themselves by God's name or say they know God and, um, and yet hurting and judging harshly other people, even they are loved. And I love you. And I've worked hard and, and really saw that truly Christ was right on the cross. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And so love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's everything. That means not just with your Sunday mornings or your your pittance of an offering to so we can you think that we're satisfying God. We're not satisfying God. The whole point in Deuteronomy, I think it was Deuteronomy, I have, I'm pretty sure, of the whole tithe thing was not to pay the pe preacher's bill or their salary. That is not it. If that was the same, if you wanted to follow that tradition, I think the priest only got uh, their share of things every seven years. So be careful. Don't say something and say, thus saith the Lord, when the Lord didn't sayeth anything like that. And if people are not experiencing love through you, love is my favorite name of God, because God is love, total unconditional love. Oh, will God forgive me? God doesn't forgive because he doesn't see it. All he sees in you is love. Oh, that's, that's not true. Oh, no. No, we're the one that see it, just like Adam and Eve in the, in the Christian and Jewish story. Guess what? They hid from God because they knew that they had chosen to do exactly opposite of what God had told them to do. So that guilt and all that shame and, you know, covering with the fig leaf, it wasn't because being naked was a sin, by the way. Their sin was when they chose to feel that they knew better than God. And we do that all the time. That's why... I think the biggest bottom line is that we have our mother's DNA, our father's DNA, and we have God's DNA in us. That is the part that is made in his image. And by the way, take everything, all the skin, all the everything out of it, out of the equation, because God is spirit, energy, Mm -hmm. not human. It's not about gender. Matter of fact, even in Christian per, Christian um, uh, perspective, uh, Scripture says that, you know, when we, w basically, in heaven, there will be no male or female. Marriage or given in marriage. Why? Well, number one, we're just going to be loving everybody because we're going to be in love, literally, in God, in Christ. And we're not walking around here in Christ, even though it says that we're being transformed into his image. So why are people majoring on things that are not eternal? Gender? Guess what? That is only for this human experience. Eternity started long before we were born, and it will continue long after we die who we are, who we really are. And I'm not here to, to change your mind. I'm just here sharing my story. I'm not here to proselytize. But I do know this. The more that I allow myself by working on the parts of me that have put big boundaries and separation between people and anger and all those things rather than forgive including forgiving myself, because it says love your neighbor as yourself. And I'm sorry, but most people do not like themselves because they don't see themselves through God's lens. But we have our mom and dad's DNA, and we have God's DNA. And with all three, we cannot separate those things from who we are. 
So therefore, we can never truly be separated from God. And we may not be able to be, we may not feel connected to him. Just like the sun shines all the time. All the time. Just at night, the earth is rotated out. But we still see that it's shining because it's reflected in the moon. So sometimes, even when we don't experience the sunshine, we need to hold on to the people who are reflecting the trueness of who God is, love is. So today, it's not about beating anybody up, but loving God with everything. You know, oh, I'm tithing my church. I write my check. And most of us write our checks so that the government can give us the pittance of a fraction of what we give. That's a lot of why a lot of people give, not because they're doing it to remind us that that are the source of all that we are and all that we have is love, is God. Anyway, so today I'm just asking you to consider and ask you and who whatever connection you have to the divine. You know, what? what's blocking my way? During the day, sometimes we can't see the sun during the day because of the weather systems that, that are created here on Earth. So there's clouds and storms and all that kind of stuff. But that still doesn't stop that the sun is shining. So I just encourage you that to look at what things are blocking the reality that this, the sun, that the, the love that God is, Shining, even in us. And I just ask today that maybe when there's someone that you're ready to be pissed at or um, someone that you want to judge, is that really what love looks like? You know? In 1 Corinthians 13, it says, very first thing, right off, and I'm only quoting that scripture because it is not doctrine, but it is a reflection of what who God really is. God is love, therefore, love is patient, love is kind, all that. But even before that, it says, it doesn't matter if I speak with the tongues of men or angels. If I do not have love, if I'm not operated in conjunction, in, in, in the dance with the divine, it is nothing but noise. And that is exactly what's happening in America, unfortunately. People have been preached at, judged, yelled at, rejected by the very people, if they really, truly had their connection with God, would only love. Love the weak. Love the poor. If you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. And instead, we are creating such chaos that it is diametrically opposed to the very one you say you're connected to, God. So, and the problem isn't the other person. That's the other thing. We need to look, if I'm not truly loving the, the divine with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving my neighbor as myself, then that's not their problem. That's something that we need to work on with the Spirit and maybe some other people. And today, be the person that when they walk by or when, they, when you say hi, that they go, well, I feel less alone today because I met you. That is love. Forgetting our own rights and forgetting that and loving others. That's what the prodigal son was all about. So today, you be the change. You be, if you will, Christ. You be the transformed person into God's image that you say you are. Now, we all screw up. I am not judging that because guess what? I I do not claim to be a saint. I do not claim to be Pollyanna. And I, ew, Pollyanna just, ew, it's just not real. 
because there is a dance with the divine within us all. And nobody can take away that responsibility. That's why that's a beautiful thing. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. That's our judgment, not God's. Remember, God is love. There cannot be judgment in love. So, don't judge yourself so harshly. Forgive yourself. Stop judging others because what really happens when you judge others, you're telling on yourself because you're judging yourself. Look at Romans. It says, be careful when you judge others. You will be judged by the same judgment you judge others. Oh, we want grace and mercy and forgiveness, don't we? Of course we do. But for everybody else, we want the law and judgment and hell? Uh Uh-uh. Well, the truth is you are loving people as yourself when you do that. That means you believe that. So I just hope today that you have a great day. And by the way, I'm about to start my YouTube channel. I've already had my first um, video that I'm going to put up, but um, I, uh, sorry, just like a second, that I put up, but I haven't posted it yet, but it's all going to be on YouTube, and it's going to be called Dancing with the Divine, and I'll send you a link if you want to hear it, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to be about love and God, not about a specific point of view of God, okay? We all need each other. Love. Be the love that you need to someone else. It will come back to you. Press down, shaking together, and overflowing into your lap. So I really do hope for you, my friends, today on this Aloha Friday that you give love and you experience love. Forgive yourself. Forgive others. Stop judging and give great give grace and mercy, forgiveness, compassion to yourselves as well as to others. So aloha from the big island. I love you all. Thank you. And woohoo.